Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage. I'm Rebecca Knight, your host, here with Stu Miniman. Our guest now is Andreas Benokratis. He is the Principal Product Manager at Ansible Red Hat Network Automation. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Andreas. Thanks for, for having me, appreciate it. You're, this is your first time on the first program. Time. We'll, we're really, gonna, really we're nervous, nervous, we don't so. bite. Okay. Maybe start, start a little bit with, you know, you're, you're new to the company, uh, yep. relatively, relatively, networking guy uh, by background. G give us a little bit about your background. Sure, I mean, I've, I actually started at Red Hat in 2003, um, and I did about four or five jobs there for about 11 years, and then jumped, went to a startup named Cumulus Networks for about two years. Um, great crew, and then now I've been, now I'm at Ansible, I've been there since about December. So we're working on the network automation use case for Ansible. All right, so networking has a little bit of coverage here. I mean, I remember, you know, says something like the open daylight stuff. Yeah. I, I had, there were actually a couple of Red Hatters that I interviewed at one show, ended up forming a company that got bought by Docker. So, you know, there, there's definitely networking people, but may, maybe give us kind of a broad view of, you know, where networking fits and the, the stuff that you're working on specifically. Yeah, sure thing. I think it's interesting to point out that as everything started in the compute side and everything started getting disaggregated, the networking side has come along for the ride, per se. It's been a little bit uh, behind, per, but um, when we talk about networking, a lot of people just think automatically of SDN. And we also, we're actually trying to think a little bit lower level, so layer one, layer two, layer three, so switching, routing, um, firewalls, uh, load balancers, all those things are still required in, in the data center. And when people started using Ansible, it started five years ago on the compute side, a lot of the people started saying, uh, well, I need, to, I need to run the whole rack. So, and I'm not a CCIE, and I really don't know what to do there, but I've been thrown in to do something. I'm a cloud admin, new, you know, the new title, right? So, I have to run the network, so what do I do? Like, I don't know anything about networking, I'm just trying to be good enough. Well, I know Ansible, so why don't I just treat switches like servers, and just treat them like, like what I know? They just have a lot more interfaces, but um, they just treat it that way. So a lot of the expertise came from the ground up, from the open source model, yeah. and say this is this is the new use case. Yeah, well, J.R. Rivers, the founder of Cumulus, yes. it's like, well, networking could just be a Linux operating model, uh, you know, ex extended to the network, uh, exactly. it, which is always, it's like, wait, it sounds like a company like Red Hat should be doing that kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly, it's, it's yeah. interesting to see a bash prompt in the networking, right? Yeah. So it's familiar to a lot of people in the, in the DevOps space, absolutely. So it, at this, it's a very rapidly changing time, as as we know in this in the digital computing age. The, the the theme of this conference is the power of the individual, celebrating celebrating that individual, the developer, empowering the developers to take risks, be able to fail, make changes, modify. You're not a developer, but you you manage developers, you lead developers. How how do you work on creating that context that that Jim Whitehurst talked about today? Yeah, I, th I think it. It starts with the true empowerment. You have, the majority of the networking platforms are still proprietary and, and walled, off, walled off gardens. They're black boxes, you can't really do much with them. But you still have the ability to SSH into them. You can still, they still, you're familiar, you have familiar terms and concepts from the server side in the networking side. So as long as you have SSH to the box and you know your CLI commands to make changes, you can utilize that in part of Ansible to generate larger abstractions um, for larger, to use the playbooks in order to build out your data center into, with, with the terms and the lexicon of YAML, like the language of Ansible, things that you already know and utilizing that and going further. All right, Could you speak to us a little bit about the customers, you know, what, mm -hmm. what's holding them back? How are you guys moving them forward to kind of the more agile development space? Yeah, our, our customers are mostly, mostly brownfield. They're trying to extend what they already have. Um, they have all their gear, they have everything they have that they need, but they're trying to do things better. Yeah, so. I, I, I don't find Greenfield customers when it comes to the network side yeah. of the house. I mean, we've all it's got what I have, and it's, we know IT's always additive, so I mean, that, that's got to be a challenge. It's a it's huge challenge. Help with, right? it's, it's, an, it's a huge challenge, and I think from the network operators and the network engineers, a lot of them are saying, they, again, they're, they're looking at their friends in the compute side, and they can spin up VMs and, and provision hardware on instantaneously, but why does it have to take four to six weeks to provision a VLAN or get a VLAN added to a network switch? That, that sounds ridiculous. So a lot of the network engineers and operators are saying, well, I, can, I think I could be as agile as you, 
so we can actually work together using a common framework, common language with Ansible, and we can get things done, and we can get all of this, the stuff I hate doing, and we don't have to do that anymore. We can worry about more important things in our network, like designing the next big thing. If you want to do BGP, design your BGP infrastructure. You want to move from a layer two to a layer three, or an SDN solution, so. Yeah, yeah. I I just love that you talk about everybody kind of this software wave and you know breaking down silos, uh, you, you, know, you know networking storage people are like oh my god you're taking but my you job away. But you don't have you it know? exactly. No, it's, this, uh, is, you know? this is completely. Yeah. We're not taking your job. Yeah. We are augmenting what you already have. We're giving you more tools in your tool belt yeah. to do better at your job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that that's truly it. We we don't have to. People can be smarter. So if if you want to add a VLAN, that can be a code snippet um, created by the sysadmin. It can be in Git, uh, and then the network engineer could say, oh yeah, that looks good, and then I just say, no, no submit. Yeah. So we, what we see today with some of the customers is, yeah, I want to automate, I really want to automate. And you say, great, let's automate. But then you start getting, you peel back the onion, and you start seeing that, well, how are you managing your inventory? How are you managing your endpoints? And they're like, I have a spreadsheet, and you're like, <laughs> As a networking guy, I guess you, yeah, well, I don't know how spreadsheets are for inventory is management. But scary for a it's lot. Super it's scary. Yeah. So how, so how do you break that down? You do, it, you do what you can. You do it in small pieces. We're not trying to change the world. We're not trying to say you're going to go 100% DevOps in the network. Do start small. Start with something that you like. Again, you really hate doing. If you want to change something really low risk, things you hate doing, just start small, low risk things, and then you can propagate that. And as you start getting confidence, uh, and you start getting the knowledge. And, and the teams and everyone starts, everyone has to be bought in, by the way. This is not something you just go in and say, go do it. It has to, you have to have everyone on board. Well, the entire organization. It, it can't be bottom up, it can't be top down, everyone has to be on and board. And Andrew, so when I talk to people in the networking space, risk is the number one thing they're worried about. Yes. They buy on risk, they build on risk, and the problem we have with the network, there are too many things that are manual. So if I'm typing exactly. in some, you know, 16 digit hexadecimal code, from notepad, manually or from right, copying a spreadsheet, and copy yeah. and paste, or gosh, you know, <laughs> yes, and things like that, there is, the, the room for error is too too high, so there's yes. the things that we need to be able to automate so that we don't have somebody that's tired or just, you know, wait, was that a one or an L or an I? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. So we, we, we understand that that's, it, it actually should be able to, you know, reduce risk, increase security, all the things that the business is telling you. All of these networking mm -hmm. vendors have virtual instances. Yeah. You can do all your testing and deployment, all your testing and your infrastructure, and you can do everything in Jenkins and have all your networking switches virtually. You can have your whole data center in virtual environment if you want. So if you're talking about lowering risk, instead of just copying and pasting and, oh, is it a slash 24 or a slash 16? Oops, I mean, that looked right, but it was wrong. But did it go through test? It probably didn't. And then someone's getting a page at three in the morning uh, and a router's down, an edge router's down, and, and you're, you're toast. So enabling the full DevOps cycle of continuous integration, so bringing in the same concepts that you have on the compute side, testing changes, in a full cycle and then doing that, so. You talked about the importance of buy-in and also the difficulties yes. of getting buy-in. <laughs> yeah. how, how much of that is an impediment to the innovation process? But one of the things we've been talking about is can big companies innovate? What are the challenges that you see and, and how do you overcome them? That is the number one, that is the biggest issue right now in the networking space, is, one, is getting buy-in. Whether it's someone who has done it on their own, someone can get an, Someone can just install Ansible and do something, and then, and then deploy a switch. But if they leave the company and there's no remediation, if it's not in the if it's not in the MOP, if it's not in the method procedure, no one knows about it. So it has to be part of your. You can you want to keep all the things that you have, all the good things that you have today with your checks and balances and the networking, and the CIOs and the people at the top have to understand you can keep all that stuff, but you have to buy in to the automation framework, and everyone has to be on board to understand how it fits in in order to go from where you are today to where you want to be. All right, so <laughs> yeah, you know, at the show here, you know, what's exciting your customers? You know, it gives a little bit of a viewpoint for people that are checking out your stuff. What 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 they expect? Um, well, I think the one thing is they they they're not used to seeing. It's they think it's black magic. They think it's just magic. They're like, <laughs> I can use the same things for everything. I said, yeah, you you can. Um, the this development process is, I think, the innovation in the community. Um, you know, for example, like. If you wanted a Cisco ACI module, it's in it's in GitHub, right? It was it's in Cisco's GitHub. You can just go ahead and do that. And now we're trying starting to migrate those things into core. So the more that we get innovation in the community, and that we have the vendors and the partners driving it, and you're seeing that today. So you know we have we have F5 here, we have Cisco, we have Juniper, we have um, Avi, all those people. You know they they have certified platforms 
um, with, with Ansible and Ansible Core, which is going to be in, integrated with Ansible Tower, um, you know, they, they have, we have full buy-in from them. They want to meet with us and say, how can we do better? How can we innovate with you to drive the next-gen data centers with our products? You talked about yourself as a boomerang employee. <laughs> I mean, what, what, are the, what is the value in that? And, do, and are you seeing a lot of colleagues who are bouncing around and then coming back from? Uh, absolutely, I think um, pre-acquisition Ansible, the vast majority of the people, I believe, were ex-Red Hatters that went to Ansible. Um, so it's really nice to kind, of, to kind of come back home and understand the people that left that came back to understand already what the... And people you know, feel that way? It's a coming oh, home? Yeah. It's, a, it's a coming home, it really is. We, they understand, you know, they came back, they understood the, the values of, of open source and the, the culture. You know, again, you know, I started Red Hat in 2003. I see this, the great things. I see new people getting hired and I see the same things I saw when I was in, back then, 2003, 2004. Uh, with all the great things that people are doing in the culture. You know, Jim's done a great job at keeping the culture how it is, even way back then when it was only 400 people when I started. Yeah, a Anderson, to extend that culture, I think about the network community and open source and, you know, we, we, right, you talk about like there's risk there yeah. and, you know, I think about, you know, I mean, I grew up with kind of enterprise infrastructure mentality. It's like, don't touch it, yes. don't play with it. Uh, you know, we always joked, it's like, I got everything there, uh, really don't walk by it and definitely, you know, so yeah. some zip tie or, you know, yeah. duct tape's going to come apart. So, um, you know, are, are we getting better? You know, is networking embracing this? You know, yes, uh, for sure. Um, <laughs> I think the, the nice thing is you start seeing these communities pop up. Yeah. You're starting to see network operators and engineers. They've been, you know, historically, if they don't know the answer, they won't go find it. Um, they, they're kind of maybe shy, shy to ask for help, yeah. per se. If it wasn't on their certification, exactly. They didn't if need it to wasn't know there, it. I'm not going to you know. know. <laughs> we're, we're we're bringing them into. So we have like there's a Slack instance. There's uh, there are networking communities, networking automation communities just for network automation. And you know, there's one, there's an Ansible channel um, on the network to code Slack channel that has almost 800 people on it. Um, so they're coming and now they have a place, they have a safe place to ask questions. They don't have to kind of guess or say, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. And now they have a, a safe place for, for network engineers, for, you know, for network engineers to get into the, the net DevOps space. Another one of the sort of the sub themes of this summit is is people's data strategy and customers and, and vendors how they're dealing with the massive amounts of data that their customers are generating. What is your data strategy and and how are you using data? So um, there's two two aspects here. So the data can be the actual playbooks themselves, the actual uh, the golden master images. So you can pull configs from switches and you can store them. Um, and you can use them for continuous compliance. You can say, you know, someone, a rogue engineer might make a change. You know, configuration drift happens. But you need to be able to make those comparisons to the other versions. Uh, so we're using, utilizing things like Git. Um, so your data strategy can be in the cloud. It can be um, similar on your side. You can do stash uh, locally. Um, so to actually, for part of the operations piece, you can use that. The second piece is log aggregation is a big piece of the Ansible. So when you actually want to make sure that a, a change happens, that it's been successful, and that you want to ensure continuous compliance, all that data has to go somewhere, right? So you want to, you can utilize Ansible Tower as, a, as an aggregator. You can go off using integrations like Splunk and some other log aggregation uh, connectors with, with Ansible Tower to help utilize your data strategy with the partners that uh, are, are really the, the driving, the people that know data and data structures, so we can use them. And, and one of the other issues is the building the confidence to make decisions with all the data. Are you working on that too with your team? Yes, uh, we are working with that and that's part of the larger tower organization. So it, it goes beyond networking. So whatever, whatever networking gets, everyone else gets. So when we start developing Ansible Core in the community and Ansible Tower in-house, we think about networking and we think about Windows. That's a huge opportunity there. Uh, you know, we're talking about AWS and the cloud, so cloud instances. Um, these are all endpoints that Ansible can manage, and it's not just networking. So we have to make sure that all of the pieces, all the endpoints can be managed directly, but everyone benefits from that, so. Andreas, thank you so much yeah. for your time. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks again for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back after this.